going on, FA Nation? Welcome back. This is the Fantasy Alarm NASCAR DFS Podcast. I am Dan Malin, and I am joined, as always, by our FSWA three-time NASCAR writer of the year, Matt Sells. Matt, we're coming off, uh, I don't know, it was a typical Pocono weekend, I feel. Like, that. that's just the racing you get at Pocono. It's not great. Um, yeah, they have, like, the longest straightaways in NASCAR, but it, it does get very boring. I was praying for a caution. Towards the end of the race, not necessarily even for my own DFS lineups because I was in the green and I was fine with what I was winning, uh, but it was just boring. It was it was just brutal to watch on TV. Yeah, that's just what happens at Pocono. The straightaways are great, but like if you have a car that's set up, you can just run away Same from people. Way. They really can't catch you um, until you know cautions or stage breaks or you run out of fuel. Um, but it, it wasn't even like the fuel came into play. Like, there wasn't really any drama in that department. Yeah, because we got a caution at the right time to just, like, fill people up, and they were good to go. And, I don't know. I feel like I had a pretty good read on the race, and then each of our drivers were, got picked off, like, one by one. And then we got a big – we got a pretty decent-sized wreck. Um, I do find it interesting that Corey LaJoy got away with hooking Kyle Busch. Like, I, I don't know. First of all, it's on track, right? It's under green flag. We've seen guys hook people and then get fined and suspended. Granted, he didn't hook them and then put them, you know, it wasn't the right rear. It was a left. But it is a little interesting that Corey LaJoy, like, got away with it once. And then NASCAR comes out with a statement that says, because this is getting a lot of attention, we're going to look back over it and see if we miss something. <laughs> viral on social media. So let's take a look at it because we have to kill everything that goes viral. Um, and then didn't penalize him anyway. And look, am I fine with that? I'm not rooting for Corey LaJoy to get penalized. I just don't know where the line is at this point. It feels like four races in a row. We've had something happen and somebody lost points and money because it happened under caution. And then the next week, we had a guy get wrecked and nothing happened. And then the next week, two dudes run into two other dudes after the race. One guy gets fined. The other one doesn't. And then we have Corey LaJoy hook Kyle Busch. And nothing <laughs> happens. Twice. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I, again, am I for NASCAR just laying off of this? Yes. Just let them sort it out. If Kyle Busch wants to go and truck Corey LaJoy at this point, fine. Okay. You know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but it's, it's probably the most awesome. exciting that Kyle Busch would have had all season if he does that. Yeah. I mean, Kyle Busch should either wreck Corey LaJoy <clears throat> or worry about finishing top 20. That seems to be harder to do at this point uh, for him. So, you know, we'll see. Again, if NASCAR is going to wade into these things, they should probably put out a statement saying why something is a penalty and why something else isn't, other than we find guys who are less popular. Like, that's kind of what it seems like they do. Yeah. Uh, but for the first time in four years this weekend, we are going uh, to the be running the Indianapolis Oval. Um <clears throat> My, if my memory serves correct, uh, it, it didn't produce the best racing for the Cup Series. I mean, I guess it's comparable to Pocono just in terms of, like, the long straights. Uh, it, it is a higher speed intermediate. So, yes, more horsepower is always preferred. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think this was ever one of my best tracks for DFS. I felt like I was always getting my reads wrong, which is why I'm prepared to just scale back my level, my amount of play this week. Um, but at the same time, like the road course was a disaster. I think they may have had one good race in the three years that they did it. Otherwise, it was a very high variance race the first two years. And then last year it was a victim of uh, just the the road course rules that NASCAR had last year. And I think this it was just like an hour and 20 minute race. Um, yeah, so Michael I'm Dell just, just <clears throat> was on auto drive. Basically, yeah, basically the, the, like, the whole the whole time. And so because of that, we, we do go back to the oval. Uh, it'll be nice. it will be cool to see. Um, but I can't say that I'm all that jazzed about it from a DFS perspective 
Are you? Not necessarily. Look, like the the cars have changed, right? Since the last time we went to Indy, we are in now the next gen car. But that's what. I, that's how we try is, to keep an open mind with it. Is like it's a new car. Right. Indy is comparable to Pocono, though. Like they're the same distance, two and a half miles. There's literally a turn. The tunnel turn on at Pocono is pays homage to the Indy corners in terms of the way it's designed and banking and um and whatnot so that's you know you get you got to take that into account in fact joey logano had a line after the race yesterday <laughs> that said well this is similar but roger keeps it smoother for us aka there's less bumps in the corners at indy than there are in the <laughs> at pocono um but the racing here was not great the last time uh, it, it turned out that the chaos that we usually see in races happened on pit road here. Pit road. This is yeah. the most. This is the riskiest pit road. It's it's awful. Schedule. It's incredibly narrow. <clears throat> maybe Indy cars are narrower than Cup cars, so less of a problem. Um, it's tight confines, just in like in terms of pit boxes and how many of them there are in a sh- seemingly shorter distance. Um, and we've seen big problems where a couple of, t- a couple of races ago, who was it? Chris Buescher got spun going into pit, going into pit road, wound up sideways and there went pit road. Like it was literally a red flag because you couldn't get to pit road. <laughs> they had to go bring out the, the, you know, they had to help push them basically to straighten them out. And then was it also that race or another race where Ryan Blaney's, uh, one of Ryan Blaney's pit crew guys got absolutely run over. No, I, I think, think it was the last yeah. oval race that they ran here, but yeah, uh, the, the pit road is disastrous. And that's one of those like variants and unpredictable things you can't really account for, especially if it just like costs you a driver who's having a really good day. Yeah. So, you know, kind of expect a similar <clears throat> strategy to Pocono. There's, you know, similar number of laps. It may devolve into a fuel mileage race, depending on when the cautions fall um, and whatnot. But yeah, you know, who knows? Maybe the next gen car saves Indy. Maybe. But if the racing style was similar to Pocono, that wasn't exactly the most attractive package of racing we've seen in a while. So uh, we shall see. It kind of stinks that this is the last race before the Olympic break, kind of going off on a little bit of a downturn here in terms of exciting tracks, but maybe Indy delivers and not just with like pure chaos and a caution fest. I will say this little break that we get every four years for the Olympics, it's kind of nice because by the time we come back from it, like my, my excitement for NASCAR DFS is almost rejuvenated a little bit because this is a relatively quiet time of the year. There's, there's no, we're recording this Wednesday night, just the night after the All-Star game. And, and I almost have an annual rant whenever we do this particular podcast about how NASCAR could take advantage of what could be a good ratings night and just have like a midweek race on like a Wednesday or Thursday since there's no MLB. I've, I've ranted about that before. Um, but in terms of like the break that we get, it's nice uh, <clears throat> to have a little time off, not to have to write or anything. And then by the time we come back, we just hit the ground running for the playoffs. So... Let's do it. Let's take a look. In the playoffs, when we get back, there's there's only a couple more races left in the regular season. The trucks only have two races left. Well, the trucks haven't raced in like eight weeks, so <laughs> I, I know I know they just raced at Pocono, but that was the first. They have what one race in in June, I think. Something like that. Uh, one they might have had two, but they were both at like one was at the beginning, one was at the end yeah. of the month. It's been it's been a while. They have a caddy yeah. office schedule. Um, <clears throat> so with that, um, I guess how are you in terms of tracks? We said it compares to Pocono. It also compares to Michigan in terms of high horsepower, uh, very little tire wear, whatnot. Obviously, we haven't run Michigan this year. We just ran Pocono. Haven't run the Indy Oval in four years since 2020 was the last one. So the data sets we're using this week are going to get a little bit odd, right? It's going to be kind of how is a guy looking coming into this race and does he have momentum on his side rather than 
hey, he's done really well at the short flat tracks. Let's carry this over because there's not a lot to compare to this week. And what makes that even harder is that so many guys wrecked out last week at Pokemon. Yeah, there was a big one. <clears throat> and so, you know, how do we gauge that in terms of just the guys who may have not really been able to show us like where they could finish simply because of they were involved in a wreck or something? Um, I yeah, think you at you, one point their entire <clears throat> scrolling pylon just said out next to guys at one point. Yeah, and I think he like jokingly uh, threw Daniel Hemrick into our driver pool sample last Wednesday, and he actually had a pretty good day. Yeah, man, that was <laughs> that was the only cheap guy that survived the <laughs> the wreck. I mean, uh, it wasn't know, great for DFS, guy. but like he he did yeah. get a top twenty five, so like still like you know better than arguably twelve drivers. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, he was still the slowest dude on the track of the guys that finished the race. So that's yeah. We'll sort of take it. Um, Nicely done, Colin. We'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and share the uh, the pricing as we go through this um, on DraftKings here. Um, yeah, shocker. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson are the two most expensive dudes yet again. Not much to add. Denny was very good at Pocono. He's been very good at Pocono. He's been good at Michigan. Kyle Larson has been good at Indy. Granted, it was in a Chip Ganassi cart. This is how far back it was. He was in the Chip Ganassi 42. <laughs> the last time we raced at yeah. Indy. Um, whole car number, whole different team. That the Chip Ganassi doesn't exist in NASCAR anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's how far back we're going for this week's race. And then Blaney at 10,000. Those are the only two guys that were 10,000 this week on DK. Blaney's kind of interesting. Um, not not simply because he won last week. Um, and I deeply regret having absolutely zero shares of Brian Blaney in my cup I series. Did, I did put him in the betting piece, and then I regretted writing him up. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you can lead 44 laps at Pocono, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a comparable track. And we kind of didn't – we normally mention this um, a little bit, and you kind of alluded to it, but this is arguably, like, the track that matters most to Team Penske. He, um, owns, the, <laughs> he owns the track. <clears throat> right. Uh, so Penske is the owner of, Inter, of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so yes. So I am a little surprised that we forgot to ask Ed if he wanted to be on this podcast this week. Um I guess for the sanity of our listeners, it's it's for the best. Uh, but you got to feel really good about Blaney. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's playing six Ryan Blaney's. That's yeah. what he's doing. Um, no, I'm with you. I think Blaney, to me, is probably the more interesting guy of this 10,000 group. I mean, obviously, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, they bring it every week. Um, I think I would rank it just Hamlin, Blaney, Larson among the top three. Probably, I'd probably go about the same. I'm just taking that savings on Blaney here. And it's not to say like Larson absolutely sucks here, but uh, started right around where he finished. And at no point last week at Pocono did I ever think that Larson even had a top five car. Yeah, it was interesting because the, the Hendrick cars were all really lightning quick and qualifying, and then they just kind of hung around, yeah. you know, during, during the race. So, um, speaking of Hendrick, uh, Chase Elliott is in this next tier <coughs> with C. Bell, Kozlowski, Truex, and Byron in the 9K tier. I really love that price on Truex. So do I. The fact that he's cheaper than Kozlowski, yes. <coughs> yes, because he's when I did had, my... He's had Go good ahead. runs here. He's just had bad luck, which yeah. I guess you could say every week for Truex, but... The speed has been there for him here. He also, you know, wasn't awful last week at Pocono. I mean, I think he had like a 108.7 driver rating. He led 14 laps. Um, you know, last year at Michigan, he won the first two stages and led 47 laps, and I think he finished second. So we're looking at the last two races on comparable tracks. Um, you know, we love Hamlin, his teammate as well, and 
Truex, for whatever reason, I can't really come up with a good reason why he's a thousand dollars cheaper than he was last week. Sure, he lost five spots from where he started, uh, but overall, the car was still competitive. He just didn't dominate the race. Uh, I don't know. I think like in a return to the Indy Oval, this is this is a track that sets up very well, and he we're getting a discount on. Uh, a driver who I don't think is necessarily have, you know, who has one foot out the door simply because he's retiring at the, at the end of the year. He's still in a great car. He's still contending. Um, we've seen him lead plenty of laps this year. Like, God dang. I love Truex this week at 9200 Yeah, he's only $900 <clears throat> more than a guy who's literally never driven this track. Ty Gibbs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Has, has never raced the Indy Oval. <laughs> <laughs> Because Xfinity did the road tours. Trucks race IRP. Right? Yep. So he's never he's never raced uh this track, interestingly enough. So the fact that Truex is not that much more than Ty Gibbs, who has literally zero track experience, is pretty interesting to me. I do wonder if DraftKings is a little bit reactive to the Kislowski price tag because he was really good last week at Pocono. He was. He was outstanding. <clears throat> but, um, and they've kind of been lowballing him for a little while. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, oh, he broke out, so now let's jump his <laughs> price tag. Um, like, is this the highest he's been all season, 9,300? No, he was 9,500 at Gateway. But ninety three into Talladega, so it's up there. It's in the top three of his. Yeah. Um, but I'm still okay with it. I think I am too. Uh, really loved what I saw last week at Pocono. Um, had leverage on him too. Such a great tournament play, and um, I don't know. The rest of this tier is kind of weird to me. I, I guess I like Busher at 85, if, but we're not. We haven't like really dipped into the 8K range. <clears throat> Bell is probably okay. Track is. Do we count this as a new track narrative for Logano? Uh, only <laughs> trying not to. Not technically, I know, but like if we. No, like, but like new car, new track. Like the, yeah, we like the Penske narrative, and you're getting a little, you know, you're getting a discount. I get it. He has not been nearly as consistent as uh, <clears throat> but he's still been I mean, he was still quick in Pocono. So, you know, if he puts up another 45 at the same price he was last week, <clears throat> he'd be perfectly fine with that. Yeah, probably. So, um, what are we doing, speaking of Ty Gibbs, what are we doing because now we're down into the you know, lower eights. We got Busher, Ty Gibbs, Bowman, Ross Chastain, Kyle Bush. Still not touching. Sorry. <laughs> um, but Ty Gibbs hasn't raced here, so are we afraid of the he doesn't know the track? It's going to take him a little while to sort it out, or do we, pull, or do we think that the rest of the field will do that, and so we want leverage in case he does actually <clears throat> figure it out pretty quick. He's a pretty gifted racer and very good equipment. Yeah. Um, you know, I try to not buy into, especially with Gibbs, I try not to dwell too much on the fact that he hasn't raced here because, you know, when he made his Xfinity Series debut, he didn't race at Daytona Road Course, and then he went out and, and he won it in his, in his first race in the Xfinity Series. Right. Um, Cup Series is a whole new ball game. He doesn't have a win this year, doesn't have a win yet in the Cup Series. I don't think it comes this week, but you know, eighty three hundred is right around where you don't need him to win. Correct. Um, so you kind of hope. Place. So. <clears throat> the thing is, is like he he does tend to qualify well as he should in that car, um, but I would kind of hope that he would start maybe like between P twelve and P sixteen, and then I would just play him and hope that he can maybe finish seventh or better basically do what Kislowski did last week um, right. even though Kislowski also had the benefit of dominator points on his side but it's kind of where I'm at I would I would agree I would do you like him over Bowman and Chastain for the bottom of that uh, I like him over Chastain for sure 
Um, I kind of like Bowman. I know we mentioned that Hendrick cars were fast and qualifying and then they just kind of hung around, but Bowman was consistently like top six, top seven all day. And then he did benefit from having a good starting spot on the restart. And so he finished his third. Um, for that reason, I, I do like it, but I do recall that his track history here before they went to the road course was not very good. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little sketch. Um, Thirty. Yeah, I think in in five previous races, average finish is thirty three point four, and he doesn't have a single top twenty. No, he did. He does have a twenty first though. So yeah, there's that. But he starts well. He qualifies it pretty well, and then doesn't run very well. <clears throat> you never know. I mean, maybe he's you know matured and gotten better and learned how to drive this track a little better. I don't know. We'll see. I think I'd almost rather just pay the extra 800 for his teammate and just go to William Byron. That's fair. It's hard to say yeah. another Willie B right now. I mean, he's just in every race. Yeah. So, uh, Kyle Busch is a no. Yeah, probably. Um, he's 8,000. What, what, like... I don't even think he's driving angry. Eric Jones and Josh Berry are averaging more fantasy points than Kyle Busch. I mean, I know the talent is there, but the car is not, and the team is terrible. I think he knows that, and I think he's just – we don't even get angry Kyle Busch anymore. We just get, like, uh, like sad Kyle Busch. And it, it's yeah, almost like he – Dismissive and – like just doesn't care like he's over this year and he's got one year left with rcr after this year don't know what he his plans are after that i have a really hard time imagining that he even re-ups with you know rcr after that like i don't know if he retires he's already sold off his truck series team i don't know what he does but he's been pretty vocal uh on the radio and in interviews about how bad it's been um like even even before the race last week, they had to fix a steering issue, and somebody asked him. I think it was Bob Pockers asked him, uh, you know, how is the steering now that it's fixed? And Kyle Busch said it's good. And then they asked, how's the rest of the car? And Kyle said it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so there's really zero reason to play Kyle Busch at this price tag. Yeah, he's not he's not getting you anything <clears throat> for it. Um, the rest of this gets a little, it's, I hate to use the line. It depends on practice and qualifying, but some of these dudes, but it does, it does. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's just a, it's just a hodgepodge of dudes who could show up one week and then not the next. Um, and it just feels like it starts a little high this week at 7,800 to basically say, okay, well, the other you know, 60% of the <laughs> the driver pool is kind of iffy, but, um, you know, I thought Barry looked fast at Pocono at times, and then he just kind of had a love affair with hitting things he shouldn't have hit. Um, Eric Jones paid off pretty well. He had a pretty solid Pocono race. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I just kind of laid off him because he started – a little too high for my liking. And I can't believe I thought P23 was too high on like the kind of track that he typically does run well at. Um, but I, I'll say like he's, he, he's got the potential for a top 15 at Indy. Um, he had to have raced here with uh, JGR, right? He did. He did. He finished second and then 39th and 33rd. That, like, what encapsulates Eric Jones? Phenomenal variance. <laughs> oh man! Uh, Daniel Suarez has three top twenties here previously. I'm pretty sure that that was again with uh, Gibbs. I yeah. Guess, right. Um, McDowell had th- had two top seventeen, had two seventeenths and a seventh here again. These are like. 2019 2020 numbers so take them with a little bit of a grain of salt but we've been discovering the guys who show up to tracks that they're comfortable on you know can actually show up and and race well so 
if that's the case, I would take, you know, Suarez is an interesting guy because I feel like any given week that his track house 99 could just show up and be good. Yeah. Um, it was solid at Pocono. It wasn't spectacular, but it was solid. Yeah, I feel like he was flirting with the top 10 at times, but didn't he just, he pretty much just started 16th and finished 16th? Yeah. Yeah, with no fast and slash at all. <clears throat> Um, solid but unspectacular. Correct. So I, you know, these guys are all getting a little interesting. I mean, I'll go back to the well with Todd Gilliland. I yeah, couldn't believe it. Uh, Last week he started P thirty three, and he was only like twenty two percent owned in tournaments. Yeah, and he was having a pretty decent day till he got wrecked, and then that yeah. like, basically put the end of it there. Um. Stenhouse, not really. I mean, <laughs> he's not. He's not been very good at Indy. Um, previously, he was doing pretty good uh, last week up until he got wrecked, wasn't he? Like I thought yeah, I saw him in the top. In that, he got caught up along with like Ryan <clears throat> Priest and whatnot. In the, yeah, what, Carson Hosevar issue. Yeah. Um, uh, Justin Haley's. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you know, we like Brad Kislowski. Um, we probably like Busher as well. So I'm sure we can find reasons to just, you know, go back to Justin Haley. Uh, didn't have a phenomenal day, but starting P34, it helped uh, from a DFS perspective. Finished 22nd for 32 fantasy points on DraftKings. Uh, the kid is just finding ways to exceed value a lot. And the RFK Racing Alliance certainly helps. Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, when we start finding these budget guys at work, we just keep going back to them. Yeah. Let me tell you this. I am more likely to play Jimmy Johnson this weekend than I am Kyle Busch. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I say it partly in jest, but like <clears> – <throat> Well, because you think about it, and Kyle Busch probably qualifies uh, maybe P25, and you don't know if he's going to finish the race. He's he's literally scored one or fewer points in three of his last five races for DFS. Yeah. Whereas with, with Jimmy, he's going to qualify poorly um, just because he, he he's admitted he cannot drive uh, the next-gen car all that well. Right. And so with Jimmy, it's like you're – if you play him, it's like maybe you're just getting 15 points. Yeah, which is better than one. True. <laughs> and he's two thousand dollars cheaper for a very good reason. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, a lot of these guys is going to depend on where they where they qualify. Um, Ty Dillon has an interesting track history here when you look at Indy and Pocono, but. He's not been very good as a filling guy. Um, although he was, let me put it this way. What car is he in? Is he in an uh, RCR car? I think so. Jeff Kings has him as the 16, and I don't think that. That's, yeah, but it also says JD Motorsports, and that team is bankrupt. Correct. That team is literally, <laughs> literally announced today or this week that they are bankrupt. Um, let me see where I would guess that Ty Dillon is in. Like a 33 or something? Yeah, 33 for RCR. Yeah. I mean, uh, came, I know we just crapped all over Kyle Bush and his older brother, Austin Dillon. Um, but I, Ty has a way of just getting better finishes than he, than he should. Um, New Hampshire, he moved up 16 spots. Moved up 20 and, at Texas. Granted, entirely different types of tracks. But when he was a full-time <clears throat> guy, he was a guy we could count on to go get several spots of PD, not be sexy, not cost you a lot of money, and just give you a shot. <clears throat> in your lineup. I'll say this. He's 5,500, and he's in an RCR car. If he can just get me 20 points, I think I'd be happy. Right. Uh, especially if I've got, you know, two drivers that are leading laps. I've got win equity and I can like, 
use the savings to put that towards, you know, maybe guys that are a little more expensive that are offering PD. There's nothing wrong with Ty, Ty Dillon at 5,500 in an RCR car. Now RCR hasn't been great this year, uh, as right. you said, but I, I'm, I wouldn't even ask for five X value. If he can just give me 20 to 22 points, I'd be happy. Right. If you're just getting 20 points from a guy that costs you basically nothing that allows you to go get another, you know, theoretical lap sled dominator, um, or a high win equity piece. Sure. I mean, if we put Ty Dillon in the lineup right now, it moves the average from 8330 <clears throat> to 8900. Yeah. You just get 600 bucks on average of availability. So, um, pretty hard to say no to that. We can toss it. I mean, that literally gets you, you go Hamlin and Blaney and Kez, and you still have $7,300 left. So, we'll go with McDowell. Why not? We'll go with the Todd father. You have 1100 bucks. Yeah. So, <clears throat> It makes it uh, makes it interesting. So real quick, yes. uh, last week we saw eight cautions for 34 laps. Obviously, two of those are for stage breaks. Uh, but we saw one, two, three, four, five, six different drivers lead at least 14 laps. Four of those drivers led 20 laps. So last week at Pocono, the laps led were pretty even, uh, evenly right. dispersed. Um. I won't say that happens again this week, but it is another 160 lap race. Right. Uh, since this is also a 400 mile race at Indianapolis, are you taking a two dominator approach uh, comfortably, or would you try to mix in three? Because this is this is going to be one of those tracks where it's like if you have you know the lead on a restart, you can pretty much run away with it and take advantage of the clean air. It's it's just what happens here. Sure, this is a historic track, and it's it's awesome to look at visually like on tv it's massive complex but the racing is boring yes um i think it's probably going to race similar to pocono because i do think we're going to see some guys get loose off corners yeah um just because they haven't raced here in a while um tires do funny things. these new these next gen cars get loose really really loose in the corners um so I would be comfortable if you really want to go gung ho about it. You can build a few two dominator ones, but I'm probably going to have more three dominator ones than two dominator ones because I think the racing is going to be pretty similar <clears throat> to last week, where just as soon as somebody's running away with it, there's a caution that comes out and you know restacks the field, and then somebody gets beat off the restart, and now they take over for yeah a chunk of laps. So that would be that would be my approach. Uh, any final thoughts or uh, what's your scheduling look like? I know I'm covering the Cup Playbook uh, this week for Matt. He's going on vacation, uh, but when can we expect your best bets to be up? Um, so if you are listening to this on Wednesday night, then the best bets <clears throat> most likely will be up Thursday at some point. Um, trying to you know if you're listening to this on thursday there's a deep there's a chance that the best bets are already up um but they're going to be up a little earlier than normal um simply because i'm going on vacation and won't be around a computer all that much um and then dan has graciously uh taken the cut playbook uh this week so he will have all of the playbooks this week uh for indy uh so i would imagine that it would be out some point saturday won't speak for him, but pay attention to the Discord. Um, it'll get posted, whatnot. Um, may not have, it's probably not going to have all the charts that you're used to, just because a couple of reasons. One, I'm on vacation. Uh, B, uh, not a lot to compare this one to <laughs> in yeah. terms of recent history. So trends don't really matter. Uh, scoring histories aren't really going to matter that much. Um, so it'll be a little lighter on the charts. Uh, which some of you may enjoy. Um, projections and roster ship, I am going to try to do those Sunday night. Um, so Sunday morning. Sorry, Saturday night. 
for Sunday morning. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we'll we'll see uh, if we can get those up and done. But yeah, that's kind of the schedule. And then uh, no NASCAR until like the what second Sunday of August? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll get we'll get a little bit of a break. We'll stay in Discord chat any of the news that, that comes across like the richmond multi-tire concept which is going to be interesting um that I think oh yeah it's like a soft compound and like a harder tire right and like a prime one so like they're kind of going f1 with this which is kind yeah. of interesting to do as interesting as strategy as for a high tire wear track like richmond yeah also interesting <laughs> that they wouldn't let them choose when to go on dry and wets but they're going to let them choose when to go on different compounds NASCAR um, makes up their own rules all the time. It's we just roll, it's yeah, just what going they do. Back to going, we made a circle, <clears throat> which is fitting for this. Uh, going back to the beginning, they made up the rules on when to find people and when not to find. Now they're going to make up the rules on the tires. So, um, but yeah, with it, we will have a podcast out in a few weeks when NASCAR restarts. Uh, enjoy Indy and enjoy the Olympics, man. The Olympics are going to be fun this year. I'm, I'm pretty jazzed. Uh, for the Olympics. Not only do I just enjoy watching them, but like beach volleyball under the Eiffel Tower is going to look pretty sweet on TV. I did see the visual of that, uh, like the POV of just sitting in the stands and like the Eiffel Towers in the background. Uh, I'm not a huge Olympics guy. If any, I'll watch, you know, hockey for the Winter Olympics. Um, but that, that one shot of the beach volleyball court just with the Eiffel Tower in the background. Uh, well played, Paris. That was actually quite lovely. Yeah. And we're going to have fencing and museums and stuff. And all sorts of cool, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so anyway, with that, uh, Dan will be around in Discord uh, this weekend. I probably won't be on very much. Uh, I'm going to baseball games at Wrigley. So that's awesome. I'm going to enjoy that for the weekend. Um, but anyway, uh, good luck, FA Nation. You got anything else there, Dan? Uh, no, uh, truck playbook will be out Thursday morning. Xfinity will be out Friday morning. Obviously they will have updates, uh, once we know the starting order for each race. Uh, but with that said, Matt, enjoy your vacation. Uh, best of luck to you for Indianapolis and best of luck to the FA nation.